Hi, welcome to The Stitch TV Show. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilt talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us for twice monthly talk shows, celebrity interviews, virtual stitch-ins, quilting book clubs, podcasts, and more. You can learn more about that at thestitchtvshow.com. <laughs> Our show today <laughs> is brought to you by The Stitch TV Show Shop. You can find digital quilt patterns, branded show merchandise, like t-shirts, mugs, laser cut, kit applique kits, and more. Today we're going to be talking about binding preferences and our favorite go-to patterns or techniques. We're joined by our quilt, A Star is Born, a friendly layer cake type of quilt. Ten-inch squares. Ten-inch squares. And it will be debuted at market, and you can get a copy of the pattern at our shop, shop.thestitchtvshow.com. Also available through wholesalers like Brewer. Right. For your local quilt shop. Right. And in exciting news, it debuted at market in fabric from our friend Krista Watson's fabric line. Woohoo! Abstract Garden. So uh, when we got the fabric, cleverly, we have enough left over to package up a kit as a giveaway. So uh, on the show notes for this episode over on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, we will have a little widget for you to enter to the giveaway. You'll get a digital copy of the pattern and the actual fabric mailed to you. We will ship internationally. It may take a couple of days because there's a whole customs form to fill out, but run over there and enter. Paperwork. Uh, the giveaway will stay up for two weeks from the day this episode drops, so we will have that date in the show notes both on YouTube and on our website. So, Lynn, uh, we're back for market. It's amazing how that worked. <laughs> What else is up? Because we don't know how market went yet. Cause yeah, because we can't talk about that. Because times well, are amazing. <laughs> all right. So we're in the the Doctor Who time travel moment, I guess. It's a little wibbly wobbly timey wimey up in here. Yes, exactly. So uh, Cheryl Saboa joined. Sloboda. Sublub. Say it again. Sloboda. Sloboda. Right? How it's spelled. Right. Doesn't there. mean I can read. All right. So <laughs> stitch in. I'm just saying, stitch in and market. She joined us. She joined us for virtual stitch so in funny. back in October. Yes, and it was great fun. Way back in October. That was a long time ago. Oh, wait, it was last night to us. For us, for this us, it's. <laughs> it's again, time last travel. Night. Yeah. Future us when you see this weeks ago. Right. Amazing. Exactly how that worked. Yeah, so find the October 2018 Stitch In if you want to learn more about Cheryl um, and her work with So Much Cosplay, her website, where her... Muppin.com. Uh, where her web handle, Muppin, came from. Yeah, that was interesting. I that thought was that was funny. So I <laughs> never knew that either. And I'm, I've seen that. It, it's all based out of a movie. Which also inspired one of our patterns. Which we didn't know until we were talking to her, so that was kind of... Fun. And we're not going to tell you anymore, so you have to go watch yes, that episode. Go, yes, go watch the episode. So this is A Star is Born. It is. Yeah, it uh, goes together pretty quick. And Pam wrote this pattern. Yep, it's three whole pages. <laughs> and it's really more about placement of colors because you want a good contrast between the star and what surrounds it. So if you have a light-colored star, you want dark fabric around it. If right. dark-colored star, go dark. Put light colored fabric around it. So it's really about finding that edge in the center star and then going up from there. And there's instructions on doing like the funky angles, which <gasps> brings us to our first topic binding. Binding? Binding. Amazing Why would how you that deal works. with funky angles and binding, Pam? Ever. Because you. Just don't make those quilts. You wanna jazz it up? Don't make those quilts. No, make those quilts. You wanna jazz it up. Let me tell you why. Okay. So, one, it saves you from stitching another seam and it gives it an interesting look. I just cut the corners off. It's like the oh, Battlestar yeah, Galactica did. of quilts. If you watch, like, current-day Battlestar Galactica as opposed to 1970s Battlestar Galactica, all their paper, the corners are cut off, and you're like, are corners expensive in the future? They are. How does, why does that even work that way? I don't know. So, I'm not. Alternate Considering I've not watched any Battlestar Galactica. I could have called it the Battlestar I feel like I'm not a part of this conversation. I didn't, I've never watched missing. that show. You don't know what you're missing. I know, apparently not. Hmm. So... All right, but I love the pattern, and I oh, love yeah. the fabric you chose in this one. The one that hung at market has all of Krista's. Has all of these right. from Krista. So lots of vibrant colors, aggressively cheerful, which I and like to make my own. And what color of star did you do with this one? Um, I did a yellow star, so it's actually this one at the bottom. Oh, which is a really bright yellow. 
a really bright yellow. It is, yeah. Um, and what I like about this, it gives you a chance to do enough detailed fancy quilting in the star so you can really concentrate that in and then um, you can kind of phone it in on the rest of the quilt. <laughs> Well, you know what this pattern is great for is big prints. Oh, yeah. And that is hard to find because a lot of patterns have us cut up big prints so small. You can't show off that. Half a squirrel. Yeah. Or the, just the butt. So I think this one. <laughs> She's going to let that go. I am. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice I just ignored it? <laughs> yes, but this one's good because, I mean, it's big old 10-inch squares. So it's perfect right, for showing that Right, you can see off. the. And if you want to go prints. crazy, you can do different quilting designs in each of the squares. or Which I would, but I didn't would. quilt this. We had to finish the quilt. <laughs> the reason we don't have the version of Krista's quilt, and we'll have it in a future episode, is because I'm still quilting it right now. <laughs> By the time you see this, right it will have this been done. this very moment. Yes. yes. It will have been done. But uh, unfortunately. You're not really here. You're quilting. I it's crazy. In like the third parallel universe. Right. Bizarro Pam we, is Bizarro Pam is and doing Bizarro it. Stitch World. Yes. But we will have it on a future episode. But you can make your own version. Okay. So you put this topic binding, binding. in here. Binding. So what do you want to tell me about binding? Well, I mean, specifically, I want a discussion about widths, why you cho choose certain widths. I, like, I'm not getting into parade points. I'm not getting that fancy. We're talking about, like, good old-fashioned binding. Good old-fashioned. Whether you hand finish, machine finish, like, all that good stuff. Okay. How, how wide do you cut your binding? Two and a quarter. And do you sew it on the front and hand stitch it down on the back always, or? No. When not you always, but... If it's any quilt that's going to be in a show, yes. I, I, what they call machine apply it to the front, which I'm going to drive production staff crazy. So this is an example of where you would machine apply it to the front and then you're going to turn it to the back. And when I do that, I would hand stitch it down on the back. Gotcha. Right. So Pretty any traditional classic, very one. traditional classic um, binding. I would say 95% of the the quilts that I see done for shows, that's the binding that they do. Gotcha. Now, do you cut yours on bias? Not always. Me Sometimes. Either. So I, I know, theoretically, yes, the binding wears better if you cut on the bias because there, you get the, cr the crossing of the absolute edge where most of the wear goes. And if you cut it on grain, then you're really just putting stress on a couple threads at a time. Now, So I get it, but I'm also lazy. And I <laughs> so I got that going lazy. for me. So this is like a finished hand binding on the back. Now, if it's like a stripe, I love a stripe on an angle for binding. And so those I will be a little more intentional about cutting. Or cutting the bias. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I know, <coughs> and I think I've said this before, I don't think in my head when you cut on the bias, it feels like I'm wasting fabric. It does. But uh, you're not. It's just I'm not keeping my line straight. So I don't cut on the bias very often. I will say that if you do cut on the bias, it is better for the longevity of the binding because it will last longer cut on the bias. Yes. Than if you cut it on the grain. Because if you cut on the grain, you've got to think that you've got, you know, your grain of fabric runs this way and you're wrapping it over. No. I literally just talked about this like two minutes ago. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was I did this whole this. thing. You were. I was over here, like looking at stuff. <laughs> Why do we do this? Again? How many are we doing? Okay, <laughs> it's going great. So yes, bias binding lasts longer. So no, yes, let me ask. We you, don't. Let, let me, me ask you. A, so are we having bias. a covered bias? Go ahead. Traditionally, bias means forty-five degrees, which, if you have a specific look. Like the print of the fabric, you get a better look at 45 degrees. Cool. Do that on 45 degrees. Sometimes I have a liberal interpretation of bias where I'm just like not straight. And maybe it's like a 30 degree angle <laughs> because that still gives you some stretch to get around like curves and which is a lot of reason why you need bias binding for certain projects because there's yes. a scalloped edge or something. But yes. I like go rogue. I'm like 30 degree bias. 
So are you asking me if that's okay? No, I'm just telling you that's what I do. Because <laughs> I'm like, you're going to do it whether I think it's right or not, and I don't care. It sounds yeah. like it's a good idea. It feels idea. like there's not an academic reason because you still get the wear on the, the cross of the fibers and not the straight on. Right. It probably doesn't, it's probably in terms of wear in between the straight of grain and the 45 degree. You see a little more stress along a longer piece of thread. Yeah. Mathematically speaking. Well, and I will say that, you know, the wear on the binding, you know, it depends on how the quilt's used, yeah. really. I mean, are you washing it every month or are you week or never? Or, I mean, I've got some quilts I don't wash yep. ever because they hang on a wall. Do you vacuum them? Sometimes. If they get really dusty, yeah. But... No. Okay. Not really. So, <laughs> all right. So, how wide do you cut yours? I said two and a quarter. Two and an eighth. She's a rebel. I will write a pattern for two and a quarter, though, because eighth inches seem to freak people out. It does. Yeah, I think it's true. I know some people, I think you cut binding from two inches to two three inches. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've seen big, thick binding. And it's a look. It's definitely a look. Yeah. No, I do most of mine by machine. So I, I the do way this, I do it. I'm going to ignore you now and get that sample. Awesome. Go ahead. Talk. So I, when I do it by machine, I apply my binding by machine on the back of the quilt, bring it around to the front to stitch it down. Now, you can also apply it to the front, fold it around, use, let's say, Elmer's school glue with a very skinny tip to glue it down and then stitch it from the front so you have a lot more control over what that finish looks like. Okay, so I applied it to the back. No, this is on. machine on both sides. Okay. So I think. I didn't make it. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't got to listen to you. <laughs> Can I also point out Lynn's notes for this episode, this segment? Binding. <laughs> Binding. There, just you should bind <laughs> quilts. That's what I have to say about this. <laughs> bind your quilts, please. Um, I think I applied this to the front and turned it around to the back and then machine stitched this down from the front. Okay. Now, what I don't like about this is that it gives you more of yeah. a flange. You get a lippy thing. On the back. That's why. But I this is just, you know, a little. It was a block, and it's a cute little block. And look, I did all this quilting on my domestic machine. Ah, this was for me to practice mm -hmm. on domestic. Yes, I mean, you just you vary the look. And if you want to jazz it up and eliminate the flange, you could use a decorative stitch instead of a straight stitch. Like you do a zigzag, or you right. could do like a serpentine, right. or any of those um, fancy stitches, if you have a fancy machine. Uh, and those can look pretty good. The trick with those is trying to figure out when you drop your needle down to turn the corner. To, for that 90 degree, or on here, it's a 40, no, it's 100 and something. It's degrees. It is. Some degrees, 135. Some degrees. Now, if you were <laughs> applying this to the back and turning it to the front, you would have this flange in the front, but you would overcome that by... I stitch... Stitch... Right... Right on that edge, so this wouldn't edge. be as far right. in. And so it give you, but yeah. you're risking where that lands on the front. That's why I apply mine on the back and flip it to the front. Oh, then you're I risking Because I it down from the front. Oh, okay, that makes but sense. But okay. it's most of mine are utility quilts, and it doesn't matter. Or you right. really want to hide it, put a minky back on it, and you can't see that stitching. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, well, this was just something I practiced, and it honestly, it just sits up on one of the ottomans in the living room for people to, you know, put their plate on or whatever. It can. I like these little, like small things, like here and other things. I just throw them around the house, literally. <laughs> just no, like a frisbee. Not really. Just put them on different tables and stuff. And I don't know that none of them match. I don't care. They look pretty. I like them. Do you have other samples you want to show? No, those are it. That was it. That's but all. I'm there's going one to. down there. There. Yes, but you know, I didn't do this one, and I don't want to show it because. It's, I don't know how it was done. Uh, I grabbed it, and then I thought, oh, wait. Didn't do that one. I didn't do that one, and I don't want to criticize something, or a, yeah, I don't know who did it, and it's better if we just don't show it. 
Alrighty. So have there you, you ever done a quilt with a scalloped edge, like an intentionally fancy edge that you knew you'd have to um, do some I did a tumbler quilt that I left the edge of the tumbler in a kind of shape. <laughs> it was slightly pointed, like 30 degree angles probably. It almost had a point, like us. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, you know, I sometimes wonder. I'm like, not much of a point. People really think I don't know. I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes, <laughs> good times, good times. Um, I've done that tumbler quilt where I had that kind yeah. of edge to it, and I didn't do a bias binding. I did straight. No. When you come to angles, it's not it's as hard, hard to do. It's straight those angle. curves. Yeah, that the you curves want. where you need a little more of the forgiveness of the stretch and. When you apply the binding and flip it around to the opposite side to stitch it down, you want that cupping effect because that helps kind of hold it down while you're trying to hand stitch it in place. Well, and it does make it easier if you are applying the... This is true with applique, too. If you have a curve, if you are stitching on the inside of the curve and not the outside of the curve it's easier to get a straight, flat mm -hmm. um, binding. Um, and applique, it's the same if you're, like, doing a thing inside versus outside angle kind of deal. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing the outside of the curve, that I would, I would want to hand stitch that down, not machine stitch that down. Yeah. So when do you put the binding together? Do you wait until you're all the way done quilted, or do you go ahead and as you're piecing to it? No. Because I have feelings about this. Okay, what are your feelings? My feelings are I, I always feel better when I tackle it while I'm piecing because then I'm pleasantly surprised that I can just move straight on to applying the binding when I'm done quilting. And right. Trimming. I prepare, and I didn't used to do this, but if I've got a top piece, I, as soon as I'm done finishing that, in fact, if I'm cutting first, I will cut the binding. As soon as I'm done piecing the top, I prepare the binding. I wrap it up and I put it in a little box and I label it. This binding goes with this quilt, this Tree of Life quilt. That's the binding that goes with it. So when I get around to quilting it, which could be two years later, five. <laughs> I have the binding. It's ready. Well, and I haven't <laughs> used that fabric on something else. Yeah, when you needed to use it for binding. Right. So Yeah, so I'm n not as so those are three structured quotes. in terms of like wrapping it and labeling it because I tend to not have so many of mine sitting waiting to be quilted. I do get a pile up, but it's like four or five at a time and they're usually all very different when it's like, "Oh, it's very obvious this binding does not go with this quilt." <laughs> so I tend to um so as I press lengthwise, um I have one of those fancy like cup holder and scrap caddy things that I have um, attached to my sewing table. So what I do is just feed the binding into the little scrappy thing. So I don't use it for like trash or fabric scraps. I just feed the binding into that. And then it also kind of will feed from there when I'm applying it on my sewing machine. Well, too. that's a good idea. I'm pretty I smart. wrap mine around a water <laughs> bottle. I wrap mine around a water bottle and then pull it off the water bottle and put it and just wrap it up and tape it and say what it is. Yeah. And then put it in a little box and I, all the binding goes in that box. And then when I finally finish that quilt, I'll get the binding out. Now, have you seen the binding babies? No. They are not actual babies that bind your quilts, by the way. If so, I want one. Because I hate binding. I bet they're pretty leaky, though. You probably don't want a baby that does that. <laughs> so, but no, of all the quilt steps, and we know this to be true, I do not care to do binding. It is my least favorite yeah. aspect of the quilt. So these are little, they're like wooden peg dolls that you wrap the binding on, and they kind of sit on this one of the spools of your sewing machine, and you can feed it from there. I've they're not seen cute. this. It's a, a, a little entrepreneur came up with those. Nope, haven't seen it. I'll have to look for those. Maybe we'll maybe when we are at market, like bef after now, before now. I don't even know when. Uh, before well, you see this, but after now, in the in between. Oh God, my head hurts. <laughs> <about that. laughs> so a little behind the scenes action. <laughs> We're filming twice the normal amount of episodes. You're so confused. To compensate for the fact that when we normally film in November, we will still be at market. So right. it's been a long day. <laughs> Yay us. 
So anyway, <laughs> I don't know what when I could, but we could look at that when we're at market or well, after we could market. We Google it right after this, but before then. <laughs> Dear Lord. <laughs> Okay. Anything else about binding? So it's going so great. It's going great. Now, let's take a look at A Star is Born or go see the movie A Star is Born because all versions are quite good. And we'll um, be right back. We're back. We, I'm to not, now, not to the now, future not or then. then. It's but right now. 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 The, okay. This episode um, possibly sponsored to you by, by the movie now. Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> when is this? This is now, sir. It's All right. Good time. So, um, go to quilt patterns or techniques. You said <clears> patterns, <throat> and I broadened it a bit because I have like one. <laughs> I might run out of steam halfway through this discussion. <laughs> That's okay. You can ignore me this time. Oh, sweet. All right. So, what are your go-to pattern? <laughs> My go-to pattern are... <laughs> We're good at words. So, I... Because you're talking about specifically for gifts. Like, if you just don't want to think about it, but you need to put something together. Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. That's the scenario I was thinking okay. about when I wrote this. I was thinking about, okay, you just found out that your neighbor's having a baby because you've ignored her for the last nine months. Or already had a baby three weeks ago when you didn't notice until suddenly there's a stork balloon on her mailbox. Yes. That happened to me, by the way. Yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> how do you make a... One, I go and tell them I've got nine months because you didn't tell me, so... <laughs> Nerds to that, but um, she's a giver. <laughs> uh, but let's say you need to come up with something quickly. Uh, I tend to rely on what's in my scrap stash because I, when I'm done with a project, I will cut all the scraps into distinct sizes. So oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, ten inch squares, five inch squares, three and a half inch squares, two inch squares. I don't have that. And so I tend to just assemble those <laughs> like transformers, make an Autobot out of this thing. Quickly. Quickly. So I can sew together a four patch of five inch squares or a nine patch of three and a half inch squares and they all come out to nine inch finish blocks. And so then I can, if I have like a feature fabric that I think would be cute or just kind of pulls it all together, then I will put in like some cuts of that in there as well to tie it all together. Bam. So you just sew squares together. It's pretty much. That's it. Yep. You don't have like That's a... why I was worried I was not going to have a lot for this segment, like <laughs> squares. <laughs> Squares. You just. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's all you do. I mean, there are others. I used to do a lot more swoon quilts, like the Bonnie and Camille pattern. Okay, I've never done one of those. They're pretty good. I mean, okay. it's, it's like oversized flying geese and half square triangles. And she has written it such that you work from fat quarters. Okay. So you can just pull fat quarters that you know work together. I think you need two or three for each star and you could do like four blocks for baby size or if you do like all nine blocks you get like a 72 inch couch size, couch size which is good for like a emergency wedding quilt because <laughs> we have so many emergency there weddings some shotgun weddings you don't know oh that's true true which is an american colloquialism for the uh, the lady became in a certain way and there was a definite time frame on when they needed to get married. I don't think that's as prevalent now. People I don't just think do what so they're either. Gonna do. It's in all the old movies, though. Yes. Like Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. The final scene, spoiler alert, is Shotgun Wedding. You don't remember because you haven't I seen that in a long time. It. You've never seen Seven Brides for Seven Brothers? That sounds super boring. That's a lot of brothers. There's a lot of singing and dancing. Oh, I'm out. <gasps> so no. she probably won't watch it. No. <laughs> Half the room just did this. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm probably the only person in the room that has seen it multiple times. I can't even tell you how many times I've seen, seen it. Seven it. times? More than that. There you go. Seven times for seven brides for seven brothers. Anyway, spoiler alert, there is so, a what is your shotgun wedding pattern? at the end of it. My go-to. All right. I use panels as a go-to quick gift kind of thing. Like, I will do a panel, and then I'll throw some flying geese around it. Or anything that you've got, like, big squares or can get, like, big, 
you know, motifs or it's, you know, the panels are kind of broken up into squares or whatever. Cut those up, throw flying geese around them because you can do big flying geese quickly. You know, you get the big square and then mm -hmm. the four small squares and you get four quick and yeah, that tends to be my go-to. Now that way of constructing flying geese may be foreign to some of our viewers, so we'll have to link to a tutorial or something in the show notes because it's right. very vague, like... Just a big square it's and four a, squares. And yeah, like, it's equal essentially triangles. you you cut one big square and then you cut four small squares. And the combination of how you sew those together gives you four big flying geese. So it works well. The, I, that's kind of my go-to. And I also like those quick, um, oh, I don't remember the company. Something Cafe. Fabric, Fabric Cafe, Cafe has a... Like a three-yard three yard bundle, and they do really quick. Pa those patterns are really quick. Yeah, I've done a couple of those, and they're very small. Like and the patterns small. themselves are like tiny. Yeah, and simple to do, and so those tend to be that. But I'm not good at just sewing squares together, hmm. like you do that. Not that I can't sew. Literally, what's hanging behind us right now? I <laughs> sewed some squares together. <laughs> I do. I do. I, I mean. I think uh, if a go-to pattern could be a jelly roll race. Could be. you got to find the right jelly roll, though. Yeah. That can sometimes be. Like, if it's a baby quilt, there's not a ton of baby jelly roll. You just get, like, a nice, colorful jelly roll, I think. But you can cut them up. I think yeah. that once you get the race done, and you can do that fairly fast. I saw somebody online saying you can do that in 45 minutes. Yeah. I'm like, okay. The biggest problem is when you do the first, like, lengthwise seam, and it gets twisted for me usually back at by the time you get down to where the fold is it's like oh <laughs> gotta trim that up before you I just cut you. it off and assume yeah. that scrap I don't care <laughs> like I got no problem with that if it's if it's matching up all the way down and it's twisted at the end you just cut that off nobody knows now they all know yeah but and they'll know it then not now <laughs> that's true now is where we are in the movie, right now. Now. There you go. We're going to have to link to that movie now. Or then. Right. Exactly. <laughs> so, Jelly Roll. I think Jelly Rolls is a yeah. quick kind of thing. Um, are you Spin Me Right Round a quick? Yeah. Jelly Roll. Jelly Roll. I feel like this one could be one, too. You got yeah. a layer cake. Do layer it. Layer cake. I mean, Stars Born could be birthday. Birthday. There's the star of the day, birthday gift. Okay. Why wouldn't that be birthday, baby, wedding? <laughs> I think I tend to minimize the celebration of birthdays as an adult. So. I was thinking for a kid. Okay, cool. That's fine. Because it's kind of small. Yeah. It's like okay. 50 by 64. I know. 69. So like oh. a kid. Yeah. yeah. Be cute with like a bunch of sports. Sports ball. Sports squares, like their favorite team. Sporting it up. I may do that for my nephew. Don't tell him. He doesn't watch the show. That's good. He likes Kentucky basketball. <laughs> All right. So that would be cute. I got a bunch now, of Now, what about over. like a turning 20? 20 fat quarters, bam. Yes, but those take longer than you realize. Yeah. There's a lot of cutting in that than... What you think. Because I did a turning 20. It took me longer than what I expected. Mm -hmm. I thought it'd go a lot quicker than it did. And it was like, oh. Yeah. But those are great beginner patterns, I think. The turning 20s. Yeah. I think if you find something that's like fat quarter friendly and that may, and you're not in the habit of cutting little pieces out of your fat quarters for various applique or scrap projects, they go much quicker. Okay. Now I have a question. So we're talking about quick, easy yes. patterns. Do you feel guilty? At all, giving anybody a quick, easy pattern compared to something more complicated. If they're not a quilter, no. Like, a kid's not going to care. No, a kid doesn't care. But when they ask you for the double wedding ring and you give them the star is born for their wedding instead of the double wedding ring, do you feel guilty about that? First of all, I would say you should never ask a quilter to make you a quilt, particularly a double wedding ring. Like, but unless you've everybody, known them a very long time and you're very good friends, but like a casual, like a work acquaintance that said to me, like, "Oh, I'd love it if you could make me a quilt for my wedding," be like, "Girl, enjoy your Target gift card." <laughs> <laughs> I 
Now that being no, said, no, but I think I think I, when you first start quilting and people find out that oh, you're quilting, yeah. they're, you're going to be asked for two different kinds of quilts: double wedding ring and a t-shirt quilt, because that's what everybody wants. Yep, good for them. Yeah, you know you could so, put t-shirt oh. squares in here too. Just saying. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah jazz it up. Jazz it up. Go but us. they have to be 10, 10 inches. Well. Yeah. You could do like the little, there's always like a small logo on front. Yeah, sometimes. You could put this on the back and the t-shirts on the front. Mix it up. There you go. So, so no, I don't feel bad. You don't? No. See, well, in one, I because do. I have not been put in that situation all that much. I get asked about t-shirt quotes, but I, get, I happily I refer just, them to friends. Like, oh, I don't do those, but I have several friends that oh, do. Oh, I found a new uh, company that does t-shirt quilts, and she spoke at one of the guild meetings that you couldn't be at. And I'm like, I will send all of the inquiries to you. Perfect. Because it's a great organization. She actually works with refugees from other countries that come to the United States looking to better themselves. It's... it's um, it's all done through uh, the government, and they come to the United States, and she works with them and helps them establish um, jobs mm -hmm. in the area. Perfect. And they they are, make T-shirt quilts. And do they do it just custom. regionally, or do they do it? I think she would take it from anywhere, oh, but it's well, custom. We should probably get that link and put it in the show notes. I know. I will. I'll give it to you. It's called Tandem. Okay. So, and the lady who owned it and came up with this idea to start doing this was just lovely. It was a great, and I'm sorry I don't remember her name. It's been a week or more since I was there. <laughs> or has it? <laughs> <laughs> Some might say so it's been have, over a month. <laughs> you could say In that. the now. But. Then. <laughs> But do you so you don't worry about giving a quilt to someone and it's not maybe your best work? Well, I'm not going to give them something shoddy. Well, no, I'm not going to give them something shoddy, but it's not going to be an art, you know. I, well, a see, quick I don't, wedding gift is not always going to be an art piece. I don't either. think they're going to be equipped to handle receive that emotionally. If I have invested, like, if I have made an art piece for them and they're like, oh, my dog will love it. Now, I have no problem with you dogs just loving quilts. slap them. Well, at that point, too, I have to realize, like, I have given them a gift. What they do with it is on their own. Yeah. Much like that set of ankle weights that I got from my mother-in-law for Christmas. <laughs> that went straight into the Goodwill pile. And I don't think she's watching this show. But hi. Sorry. <laughs> That's where they went. In my defense, they were the ones under the pair of socks that had been peed on by the dog in the gift bag. So, you know, that's a long story. Anyway. <laughs> the sock part was an accident. And we have since discussed it openly and come to what we think happened. Her, no, uh, her mother like, was staying is this with the her. the one where your no, and her mother's dog got it too. No, no. Okay. Um, her the her mother was staying with her. Lot. Different dog. Oh, okay. This was an elderly dog that was mildly incontinent, and we think the dog like just got into the laundry, and laundry was then put on bed, and then it kind of like this this particular pair of socks like just fell off into the gift bag. But when I was opening it on Christmas, I was like. <laughs> So you got ankle weights and pea socks in the same in the same bag. <laughs> Little did I know that was not the worst gift I would receive that year. <laughs> because about two gifts later, so large family, I married the youngest of four boys, and we used to do a swap with like the brothers and the their wives. Oh my god! We were drawn names. Oh, I this know where was this one's going. The first year after I, I know where this first one's Christmas going. after we had been married, we got married in January. So I'd been officially in the family for eleven months, and I open up this box. And I'm like, oh, it's from one of my brothers-in-law. <laughs> it is a black see through nighty. <laughs> and my husband is across the room, <laughs> and he's like, oh, what? And my mother-in-law, oh, what did you get? And my husband turns, and I'm like. I was not as cool as I am now back then, 18 years ago, when we were like. <laughs> oh, 
so at this point, if they get a gift from you, it's better than any of those. So pretty much good for it's you. It's not peed on socks. It's not peed on socks. No, I will say. So in my mother-in-law's That's, defense, I finally oh copped to it. Like several years later, I'm like, you know, this happened that Christmas, and she was mortified. She's like, oh my, why didn't you say anything? I'm like, it was my first Christmas officially in the family. I didn't. I didn't want to make you mad. I didn't. I didn't think. I didn't take it as a judgment. I just thought, like, well, that's weird. Odd. Odd. Weird. Like it wasn't. Oh, she hates me. It's, she's sending me a sign. Like no, I didn't think any of that. Uh, but yeah, we figured out it was probably the incontinent elderly dog. <laughs> There's no excuse for the ankle weights, however. <laughs> that shit. Still, we're gonna need to bleep that. By the way. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> we're gonna put an explicit tag on this episode. <laughs> Sorry. Ankle weights. Don't. Give those to your daughters and mom. So, okay. Um, I, I was, okay, so my point in asking the question was. No, I don't feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad. I got bad. no regrets. <laughs> I think I feel bad. Really? If I give someone a gift and it may not be the, you know, the best kind of work that I'm doing from the standpoint of. Is it because you I, want them to I look at you know. a certain way? I don't know. Or because you Feel like it's not a true expression of your feeling for them. Yes, the second. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I want to have time. Okay, and this is me. I want to have time. And and I think part of the quilting experience is, you know, you're pouring into this gift that you're giving someone, and that's a part of my expression of love towards them. And... I want it to be the best for them. So I want to give them something very valuable for me because it's a gift. It's a heartfelt gift. And sometimes if I'm not doing my best work, but I, I don't also feel, feel like, like it could and be. And yet, and yet, one of the quilts I totally didn't like and didn't feel like it was my best work. You wanted, and I gave it to you because you wanted it, it and you love it. Mm-hmm. So I just, but it, but it is. I don't know if, uh, it's not disingenuous, it's not disrespectful, to give them a gift that you are expecting too much of them in the receiving of it. Like yes, if you had, I've had to a piece get, of I, art. No, I've had to get over that. Yeah. You I've can't had, hand. I went through that in my life. Because and they don't know how to receive. They don't like, know how oh, to receive Oh, I thought it this, was a quilt yeah. and I could use it on the couch. Yeah. Like, no, it's heavily quilted and meant to hang on your wall. And they're like, well, it's not going to keep me warm. Yeah, no, so, I mean, no, I had to get over there. that. Yeah. No, I did. Because you give a gift and you expect them to receive it a certain way. So, no, 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 no. this is not coming from that okay. place. I think it did when I first started. Yeah. But not anymore. No, I'm, I'm like, it's theirs. It's their quilt. Yeah. They get to do with it whatever. I just want what I'm pouring into it to be my best work. It is my best work for that project. Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. It's my best work for I like that. I'm going to adopt that. It's good. Good. We're Thank you. Winning. I didn't get ankle weights or pea socks. So, yes, we are. <laughs> I'm just saying. I think if that's the standard of comparison, we're good. We're good. Yeah. So, do you have a go-to quilt pattern, or do you go to the store for quick gifts? You can <laughs> let us know. Leave a comment on our blog or on the YouTube episode or in our Facebook group, What's Up Stitches? And that's all we have for this episode. Today's show is made possible by the Stitch TV Show Shop, your place for quilt patterns, the Stitch TV Show merchandise, and laser cut applique kits. We'd like to thank 77 Peaches and Big Think Productions for helping produce the stitch. If you've enjoyed the show, please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notifications on YouTube to know immediately when a new episode drops and the bell. Yes. So the next virtual stitch-in is Friday, December 14th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern, broadcast live on our YouTube channel. Our next book club episode is November 30th. My podcast have to be a squares out Fridays or Saturdays on iTunes or Google Play. All those details and more can be found on our website, thestitchtvshow.com, along with links to purchase the Stitch TV Show merchandise. Tune in next time for more quilting chat with friends.